you're buying an option, who sets the price of the option? The seller. Who's selling the op option? The market maker, which means they get to set the price of the option, which by then, by default, sets the price of the Greeks. Huh. So why am I using it if they control it? If I'm buying a sell based on what it says it's supposed to happen, and I'm only going to make money if they're wrong, they don't want to be wrong, and they have a lot more money than I do. So they're going to, by default, control the price of that option, which by default controls the price of the creeks, which makes them correct. I will not buy an option based on what I think the theoretical price should be in the future based on the price of the, of the calculations they're giving me for their own profits, not my profits. That's wrong. Hmm. You come to me and say, Mike, I'd like to give you my money to invest. And I show you that based on my calculations, I should make at least 50% per year minimum. Correct? So I will give you those calculations that show that I'm going to make 50% per year minimum so that you'll give me your money. Now, once you gave me your money, I'm only going to make money if you don't get that money back. Huh. So, I set up those calculations that show me to make 50% so you're giving your cash, but I'm only going to make money if I get to keep your cash. Well, by the way, those numbers I gave you so I was going to make 50%, I just made them up. I don't make a single penny. I'm a Ponzi scheme. Give me your cash. I'm taking it all. Sad, but that's what happened. I'm not by any means a way of saying that the market makers are positive schemes, not at all. I'm just saying if you use Greeks, you're using a calculation for you to make money based on what they use for themselves to make money. You can't use it because they control those numbers they're giving. So why would you want to use something that somebody else controls that allows them to make money for you? Because they will make those numbers be whatever they want to be in order for you to lose your money so they can make them. That's why you don't use the Greeks. What I will use the Greeks for, if I look at an option, is this overvalued or not? If I'm a realtor and I walk into a house and say, what's the price of this house should be based on the price per square foot, is this house overvalued or not? That's what I'll use the Greeks for. Because I'll have to find out how type of fair I'm going to use. So, that's what, so that, that was kind of the question for that. So roundabout way, don't use something that somebody else creates for you that's used in their best interest and not first. And, and if you want to look at any stock, let's go back and look at a stock day after day after day and say, based on the Greeks, here's what it says it should be. And you go back and you plot day by day by day and see if they're correct or not. Because they're not. If they're correct on that day, they're correct on that day, but they don't have to be in the future. So if they don't have to be, I'm not going to use it. What does have to be correct? The intrinsic value. They can't mess with that. That's what I'll use. So if I buy a stock at $26 per share, I'm buying the $25 call. That stock has resistance at $27 per share. What's the minimum the option will be worth if the stock goes to $27? Two bucks. If I buy that option, it better be less than two bucks so that I can sell it when it gets to be two bucks. That they can't mess with. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you do it that way, you have a much better chance of success. Hmm. Sounds kind of strange, not based on what you've learned. Remember, what you're learning is coming from floor traders. Does that mean I have to ignore all these delta, zero, seven? Does it mean you have to, mean you have to ignore all the delta, theta, gamma, Vegas, all that? Yeah. I can't tell you that if it fits your style of trading, that's fine. It doesn't fit my style of trading. So and I, do I use them? I don't use them at all. Anybody do, with us perfecting profits? You see, out of the out of the one loss we've had, out of 45 trades now, 45, 44, we're still in one. That one loss we've had, we've never, ever, ever once used the deltas or gammas or, or thetas or vegas. We've never, ever once used the trees. Huh. Now, if you can show me somebody who uses the Greeks and has a better success ratio than that, then maybe I'll listen to them. But I haven't found anybody yet. I haven't found anybody yet who will put up their live trades in their own personal portfolio that does better than that. So, so you're, I'm trading, not gonna to you're trading all the options? I'm trading options. I do some cover calls. I'm trading options. Yeah. I mean, like the directional trade in the future. Yeah. You don't do anything like that. I haven't been put right now. We have a straight but we don't do too many puts or calls, but in the middle of the market, when the whole markets were dropping, when they were crashing back in uh, last October, remember that? We actually bought a call option on the queues and made money. But uh, we don't do too You were right in the direction there. Though. Yeah. You didn't have to adjust. Well, I went opposite the marketplace. The markets were dropping for puts. I, was, I bought a call and made some cash. Yeah. So usually, though, most of our directional, most, most of ours are spreads. And that's why we're so successful, because we can continue to alter those spreads, just like I showed you on CSX here, until we're profitable. 
I thought on your one was, I was asking Kim, didn't you, didn't you get it put to you and then you ended up selling covered calls? No, that's not actually, that's a trade I'm into. I'll cover that one. The one loss I had was IWM. Oh. It was a spread trade. I, I had a straight put on Russell 2000 with IWM. That's when the market was down, remember, 700 points. Boom, just like that. Well, actually, I think it went up 700 points and I had a straight put. So I immediately rolled it into a bull put spread. The next day it was down 400 points. I bought back and it went back up again. And I rolled back into the put and I went down the next day. I just closed it for a loss. Three days in a row it was at least a 400 point move three days straight. And in opposite directions. And each day, I, I have no idea. So I just closed it for a loss. The, the trade for ATDI, the one you're talking about, the covered call, I closed that for a profit as about half of our members did. For some reason, the other half didn't get filled on the trade. So I went back into that trade at a loss specifically to continue to write covered calls on it. And so right now, that's what we're doing right now. So ATDI was close to the profit. Um, went back into it. I went back into it at a loss for anybody else who was still into it. So we're into it right now. We sold another covered call on it at 12.50. The stock pulled back yesterday on an up in the market to below 12.50. So it's looking really good for us. We just keep lowering our cost basis. So that's kind of one of the examples I want to use for covered calls right, about how we can still make money on a down trading stock. Okay. Other questions? When, when you sell, I mean, the, you still believe in, in short time? I believe in short time and long term. I, I trade short term, long term both. I like really short term. I like to trade futures. For some reason, most people don't. They have a problem when you say the word futures. I don't know where it came from. Maybe if, you know, maybe you've heard some bad stories in the past. Uh, the new futures that most of the people that are my generation are a little bit younger trade, uh, we trade index option futures and not futures where you're trading like uh, soft futures or orange juice or things like that, where no one's going to drop off a load of oil in your front yard or anything like that. That's not where we trade. It's index futures, cash sellers. So a whole different story. And those are so much easier to trade because you only have two options, buy or sell. You don't have time value. It's very, very minimal. You don't have different strike prices. You have you can buy or sell the current price. That's all you've got. So it's an uptrend. I'm buying. If it's going up, I'm selling. Those are your only choices. So it's much easier to trade than options are. Much easier. Talk about manipulation on the future. Talk about manipulation? Yes. There isn't very much manipulation at all in the futures because they can't. Now, they might see them go down maybe four ticks real quick and right back up again, but they can't manipulate the price because the futures are based on, they're trading about one and a half to two million contracts a day uh, because they trade so heavily, you can't really manipulate the prices to them. There's too many outside influences to them. Do you trade those uh, intraday or just uh, day trading? On um, futures? Mm -hmm. I trade them intraday when I trade futures I, because I'm using a company called uh, Infinity because my trading platform. It's only $500 per contract. So which means that you can do 10 contracts, which is $5,000, and it moves up a point, and you just make $500 on a $500 on a $5,000 investment by your six minutes. What's your success ratio? Because, because I'm trading yes, many. So it's two trades. It depends on. I don't. I don't. Is there? I mean, is there a method you guys have that's different? Than, <laughs> yes. If you look at our futures, we don't trade with the, I'm going in for a three tick profit and an eight tick stop loss. I don't use stop losses. What I'll do is instead of, if I'm trading futures and let's say it's going up and it's an uptrend and I'm wrong, because it'll change intraday, and it breaks for support, I will hit the reverse button at two more contracts. So instead of taking a top stop loss, I've reversed it at two more contracts, and now it's in a downtrend, I make my money back. So, and if it just, if it's an uptrend, it's just going to pull back, and uptrend pulls back, I'll dollar cost average at the second one in there, which lowers my cost basis. There's, there's, turns away your stop losses completely into longer-term trades that you're eventually profitable with. Right. That's a huge, huge difference. 